And then another follow-up question is, um, no, not follow-up, it's a different question. Ben does a lot of fly trades, but my entry criteria have to do with looking for a call side IV skew. Uh, is there any way to search for that using your tools? There's not a direct filter or volatility skew across a similar ex uh, same expiration, okay? And um, I don't know if you're comparing two different ones. Uh, in those cases, you're comparing two different underlying securities. In most strategies, yeah, you can only screen by implied volatility ratio, which isn't the skew you're looking for, Ben, in things such as calendar calls or calendar puts. But I don't think that's the same thing you're kind of looking for. The volatility ratio, implied volatility ratio, in this case, not a skew. Applied volatility ratio is just comparing the implied volatility of the sell option divided by the implied volatility of the bought option. In general, what we're looking for, of course, there is that I'm selling a near-term call. This is the calendar put search where I'm selling a near-term call, and I'm buying a call. It's maybe five or six months out in time. Diagonal calendar spread or poor man's covered call. I typically want and I do want the volatility of the option I'm buying to be lower than the near-term option I'm selling, Ben. That's where the implied volatility ratio comes in. That's not necessarily a skew, though. That could be something, I mean, that's a little bit different than a skew because it doesn't mean that all options that are further out in time have a positive implied volatility ratio. It just means that combination I'm looking at. To be honest with you, uh, I think I've mentioned this recently before, that's been very tricky for me. And I haven't been opening a lot of diagonal calendar call spreads. It's still been, the way the market's going, they've still been a lucrative strategy. But like you, Ben, I have my criteria as well for a calendar call where I want to look for an implied volatility ratio of greater than one. And, you know, I'm going to change this here. I'm not going to go that far out. Uh, let's just go uh, 150 to 340, 350 days out in time. What I found in the last several months is that less and less results were coming up on my search using this criteria. When I was running the search for around September, excuse me, September, uh, November, naturally, January even, and even into March, what was happening is the near-term options due to everything that was going on were inflated. We had the election, we had uh, earnings cycles, we had the pandemic, we had the um, rollout of the vaccines. We had other things that were coming up that were, yeah, great for near-term implied volatility. But going out forward, the future volatility, when I was looking in September at March options after the election and April options, those IVs were higher than what was currently in September in October before the election, before those other events. And I couldn't find the implied volatility ratios on the good stocks I wanted where the IV was higher. What we do have for you, Ben, is the SKU tool. That is located under the signature tools. So if you had a stock in mind that you wanted to analyze for a potential SKU across time or across the same strike, we would just go into the SKU tool or the volatility tool, the volatility SKU tool. We put in Apple. I'm going to go to August expiration. And I'm going to look at just the strike SKU. I want to see the call SKU. Yeah, I want to use all strikes for this one. I apologize. Yeah. So the calls, excuse me, are in red and the puts are in blue. So as you can see here, going to the different strikes, as you expect, the at the money has the lowest implied volatility for standard August expiration. There's sort of more of a smile here going on with the calls and the puts. A little bit of a data glitch here uh, showing a call implied volatility of zero, probably because it hasn't traded in 10, 15 days. The 45 striker, if it even has ever traded. But the skew here, you're sort of more seeing a smile here. And that's just for August expiration across the calls and the puts. Now, if I'm interested in calendars on Apple, what am I going to look for? I'm going to consider the time skew. Just as a quick view, I'm going to look at the at the money strike. And I see here that the near term options for July 30th, pretty high implied volatility is 0 0.3, 0 0.31 around that time period. It comes off drastically after that. It settles down to about 0.27. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that's more than 10%, isn't it? From 0.31 down to 0.27. And again, this is just calls and puts, but this is the 145 at the money strike across all expirations. 
now you see where sort of my dilemma is, is if I was looking to sell an August expiration and buy a call potentially out to September. Oh, that's 2022, isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah, but buy one out here. I'm almost an implied, I'm almost at that negative implied volatility ratio. 820 is at 0.27 and 0.28. Uh, down here in October, I'm at 0.27 and 0.26. Just right at that positive um, implied volatility ratio here. And if I was selling standard 20 at 0.27 and buying out here to December at 0.28, I don't have the IV ratio I want. The IV for the December series is, you know, one one hundredth higher than what it is for selling the August 20th. Can I derive anything from this chart or bullish to bearish? I can derive this pretty easy. Uh, I guess Apple's earnings are coming around around 7.30, July 30th is about when Apple's earnings are coming around. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Just go here to Apple in quotes. Sometime before the 30th, the 28th, maybe 27th, 7.27. There you go. 7.27 is Apple's earnings. And that's why the at the money volatility here is higher than where it is almost anywhere else, even going out to 2000 and oh, no, 2023, we're back to 0.31, but too far out in time in that case. So again, Ben, I am sorry. I don't have a direct search for call side IV SKU or IV smile in the search tools. But if you want to identify a specific stock, you can use the volatility SKU to sort of gauge uh, what you have coming up for your position either based on just the strike skew for a set expiration that you're considering. We go out to July 23rd for all strikes. And there again, you know, little data missing with these options that have never traded probably, but you got more of a smile going on here for Apple than a skew. It was one of the other stocks we were looking at today. BBW, the one that had sort of that negative chart that, you know, the last day or two was showing a negative chart pattern. Yeah, that's for the strike skew, same expiration. That's about the same. Oh, that's July 6th. Let's go. I'm oh, sorry, July 16th. Let's go to August, see if we have anything better. You know, see, that's not quite what you're looking for either. But again, it's that kind of show there, that giving you a slight smile there, but what you kind of expect in that case um, across all strikes, and then you can use the time skew. Not a direct help to you right now, Ben. I understand that. Um, but that does give you a gauge where you can look one stock at a time to see a skew or to potentially see a smile uh, on that as well. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at 528 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if anyone has any last minute questions, I encourage you to send those in. It does look like we were able to we covered all the questions that came in uh, live. I just want to remind everyone, of course, that today's material are my thoughts on your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading recommendations or trading suggestions. I'm not opening a bearish position on build a bear. I'm not opening a bullish position on um, oh, that one position we did look at. It wasn't the video. It was the other one. And I'm not opening a bearish position on SE, which we saw the negative MACD crossovers. Options involve risk and may not be suitable for all investors. That's why we practice proper position sizing and, of course, the proper hedging approaches with married puts, uh, collars, using VIX options to help hedge a leverage portion of our portfolio, such as bull put credits and more. Now, today we got to look a little bit at the search tool and changing the technicals. Didn't really look at the portfolio tools today. Uh, we used the profit and loss chart to sort of help us build a broken wing butterfly best as we could. And we looked at doing research and analysis on the stock chart, company information a little bit more. At any time, if you want to get access to these tools to see how they can work for you, just go to powerop.com, put in your name and email address, and you'll have full access to the search tools, analysis tools, portfolio tools, and more for 14 days, no credit card required. And after that, the subscription levels start at only $45 per month for end of day data service. The upgrade from that is the delayed service where the data is about 15 to 20 minutes delayed. That's only $65 per month. There's an upgrade to get access to the full historical tools. What that means is the 20 minute delayed service, but with full access to the several years of back testing data we have for the historical search tools, historical option chain, and more on power options. Of course, the real time service where every time you run a search, refresh the page, you're getting the numbers calculations at that very instant. Earlier in the presentation, we mentioned about the virtual library of archived webinars. You can access those in two places. 
On Power Options, under the free webinar tabs, they're split up into categories, Power Options tools, strategies, concepts, requested topics, or just go to our YouTube channel. And you can scroll through the videos or you can do a search for covered calls, credit spreads, diagonal spreads, and you'll see a listing of videos that match the criteria name for the strategy or concept you're interested in. We try to keep the titles and the tag names very similar to what one might look for based on the subject matter. Let's see here. Now, I do have a couple other comments, I believe, that came in. Oh, Kip. Kip says, thanks so much. Uh, great session. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, thank you, Kip. I hope you do the same. And Ryan says, thank you for your help. Have a great weekend, Ryan. I wish I could have been more help there, but uh, hopefully that helps you get in the right direction of starting to use the tools for some of the complex things and interesting things that you're doing there with the broken wing butterflies and more. If you do think of any other questions later on over the weekend, remember, send me an email at any time to support at powerop.com, support at radioactivetrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. Of course, trial members and subscribers, you can schedule a free coaching session at any time. That's essentially a one-on-one -on -one phone conversation with myself or Ernie. 35, 45 minutes, we'll walk you through the tools on the site and answer any questions that you have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining me this Friday afternoon. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for the discussion. And thank you for the great comments. I hope you all have a safe and fantastic weekend. And we look forward to seeing you as we dig into the trenches next week for our next trading week here as we go into standard July expiration uh, for July 16th. Take care, everyone. Good night.